What's going on, Charles Botenston? So today we are going to be talking to either first-time homebuyers, the person that wants to stay in New York City, the person that bought in New York City, moved out to the suburbs, getting a second home, or they're getting their primary residence and they're moving back into the city. This is for you all. Yes, New York City is expensive. It's up there with London, Shanghai, Hong Kong, and pretty much all the other cities, LA is out there, but New York City is a special little breed because you don't get the size. It's, it's like all the countries that I just mentioned before, Tokyo, like you don't get the size that you should be getting for the price that you're paying, should be getting, but it's all relative. So the first thing is, and it all depends on your scenario and what you wanna do, but the first thing is, and I'm gonna be going over all of them, is potentially skip the elevator. So the first thing is when you're looking, I want an elevator. I need an elevator, I have groceries, I have a bike, I travel a lot, I don't wanna be lugging things up and up and down the elevator, things like that. Let me just go over the experience of having elevators in the buildings that I use, that I rent in. So the first one was a door closing elevator. So in other words, you would have to look at when the elevator through like a little peephole, you would see, okay, the elevator came down, there would be no ding or buzz, it would just come down, it would align, and then you'd open a door, you would get on, and then you'd have to physically close a gate. And only when the gate closed and the outside door closed was the actual elevator operable. Okay, this was a pain when I was actually going on trips, when I had my bike, when I had my hiking gear, when I had all these groceries and I'm like trying to open the door and he was making a lot of noise and I was banging into it. It's not a fun experience sometimes. Yeah, there's an elevator, but the stairwell literally was right there. I would always take the stairs. It was a lot quicker. Even today, I live on the fifth floor. I have a beautiful elevator. It's quick, it's fast, everything else, but it's not on the ground floor all the time. And I'm like, I'm not gonna wait. I don't know what's going on up there. It's on the seventh floor or eighth floor. We only have one elevator. So just understand, just because it has an elevator doesn't make it just this immaculate, unbelievable thing. And I'll, I'll leave you with a couple of um, items is that I had a buyer one time. It was two years ago. It was very interesting. The number one question, actually two questions he asked was, the water pressure to people that live there. So he would be in the lobby and he would be asking people that live there and he said, how's the water pressure in the building? Because he didn't have good water pressure and it's one of those things that you kind of, you, you turn it on during the walkthrough or when you're, before you're gonna make an offer, but you don't actually see, is this good water pressure? But going back to the elevator, the second thing he would ask is, how's the elevator? Because sometimes it's down a lot. Sometimes they're renovating it. Sometimes they're even renovating the roof and only one is operable out of two. Sometimes it's, even a pain beyond that is that you have such a large building with so many residents it's just it takes forever there i <laughs> one of the buildings we literally walked in and he just goes no there was a line to get to the elevator and he's like no i'm not going to do this so skip the elevator and by the way a walk up it's not that bad we're actually selling a walk up right now number two is when it comes to a doorman everyone wants a doorman obviously you have packages they collect the packages so from most expensive to least expensive the most expensive is a four, full full-time doorman building. Obviously that could be multiple doorman or just one doorman, it doesn't really matter. But that full-time doorman, obviously a lot of people think of safety and collecting packages, it's nice to have, it's, you know, and they feel better because they have a full-time doorman. The second one is a part-time do doorman. I have a part-time doorman, it's only there, or he's only there, he's great, he's wonderful, he's fantastic, he's lovely. And he's only there during the times to collect packages. He's not there late at night for security and he's not there early in the morning when I'm leaving. He's just there literally to take packages and open the door for us when we're arriving and coming and going during certain hours. This actually helps with cost because then the third type, which when he's not on, we have a virtual doorman. A virtual doorman is a camera. There's two types of virtual doorman when you actually call into the system and it goes somewhere else, but now most virtual doormans, the way that they say it is that there's a little camera and you can see who's there and before you let them in, you can zoom in and out and move the little camera and everything like that. So that's what we have when he's not on. So go with the virtual doorman, save some money, a lot of money actually, because they put it right around $500 a month. Usually, typically is reduced from your common charges or maintenance, depends if you buy a kind of co-op if you go with a virtual doorman. Number three is everyone says I need laundry in the apartment. First of all, not all buildings allow laundry. We, I, I'm on my third apartment in the same building. Everyone asks that. And the reason being is they're big apartments. So people say, I have kids, I have guests, I don't wanna go downstairs, whatever the case is, they need it in there. So I put it explicitly in all caps letters and I just say no laundry allowed. There's laundry in the building, but there's no laundry allowed. And the reason being is that when you 
had, first of all, people 100 years ago, it's a pre-war building, people, pre-World War I building, when people were here living in New York City, they didn't have laundry. They just did their own laundry and they hung it out like they did back in the day. So the pipes were not actually built. They only had pipes for, for exiting out of toilets, not out of big shower stalls with hundreds of gallons of water per day, or even the, the flow and the rush that's necessary for a washer dryer not to be backed up. There's a certain pipe size that needs to be there. They also have a, a fear that the pipes are so old is that if you have this much running water, it's gonna break the pipes. So always understand that the building may not allow it, it may not be allowed in the apartment, it may not be able to be put in the apartment because it's wet over wet, wet over dry, you know, they, there's certain regulations within the apartment. Just if it's in the building, awesome. If you have to go down the block, you know, sorry, but you're saving a lot of money. You're still living in New York City. Moving on is the gym membership. A lot of people say, I need a gym, I need a basketball court, I need a pool, I need a roof, I need, I need a lounge, I need all these amenities. It's like, well, you know, are you gonna really be there? I'll give you one story. So someone was buying down in the financial district, also known as FIDI. We actually helped coin that phrase. Thank you very much to everyone that uh, I used to work at Platinum Property. And essentially, they, the guy that I took on, actually it was for rent, it wasn't for, he wasn't looking to buy. And he said, I need a basketball court. I said, well, okay, here are the buildings. We went to check him out and he took one of them. And he said, I need a basketball court. So I called him up six months later. Hey, how's it going? How's the last six months? I know you moved to New York City. Are you enjoying it? I love New York City. It's great. I love the area. The building is beautiful. I'm like, how much ball are you playing? You know, how much basketball are you playing? He goes, yeah, I haven't had time to get down there. I was like, dude, <laughs> we, <laughs> we narrowed down thousands of buildings to five buildings that had basketball courts and you haven't went in the last six months to check it out? No, that's what happens. I had another person, he needed a pool because he was training, he loves pools, it's good on his joints, he was training for, or no, he, he used to be training for marathons and it's swimming, his bedding and everything else. He never used the pool. He was there for like two years. He's like, well, I was there like three or four times. I, I guess I didn't really need it. Understand everything that you think you need, you may not. Moving on, the last thing is, so when you're actually coming down to what area to choose, there's areas, say, in the West Village. West Village is very popular, but then there's Barrow Street. You know, Barrow Street is a little bit further away from everything else, or West Street, which is even further. Or if you're in, say, Battery Park City, you're a little bit further from all the action. You might be further from the subway. It's a little less expensive, and the reason being is that it's not prime. Right there, right in the center. So for me, I have a part-time doorman in a building that I really like, and it's a studio. I could have had a full-time doorman with a one bedroom, so a larger apartment with a full-time doorman, but my walk would have been 10 minutes longer to get to the subway. So that's up to you. Do you go with the location? Do you go with the size? That's as simple as it gets. When you go to the Upper East Side, obviously you have the 2nd Avenue subway, but you also have obviously York and East End Avenue. It's a little bit further. Obviously 2nd Avenue subway, it's great and everything else, but you have to trek all the way down to the 2nd Avenue subway. So people say, you know, especially back in the day, it was a little bit different. Upper West Side, West Harlem, you know, Lower East Side is far away. If you're on Avenue C or D, you obviously, or B, C or D down in the East Village, it's a little bit challenging to get to the L train, which, you know, is up in the air. And then that goes to Union Square. And then from there you have to transfer. So do you want to go with the size? Do you want to go with the location? Then there's other things that you need to have. Uh, we're not going to get into that, but just, you know, other things that you need to make sure that you can buy into the building. So in other words, uh, debt to income ratio, post-closing liquidity, what's the size of your dog, what are your, what's your credit score, who's, if you're getting a gift, who's gifting you the money, is it in your account, can you afford everything? Those are the things that we should really be looking at. And then from there, financially, we say, okay, here are the buildings that we can get, here are the expectations going into the purchase. That's the best way. Most people work backwards. They say, I want a doorman, in, in-house laundry that's in the center of everything, and it has a gym, it has a pool, and it it's like, no, 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 let's look at your financials first, and then say, okay, the, if you want that, this is the size of the apartment. We're not getting a two bedroom, we're getting a one bedroom. You were not getting a one bedroom, we're getting a studio, we're not getting a townhouse, we're getting a two and a half, you know, something like that. So always work backwards from your financials rather than what you want.
that's really what you want to overall get from this presentation. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you did, leave your comments below. Have an amazing day. As always, subscribe to the video. Shoot me an email, charles at botanston.com if you guys want any topics discussed. Talk to you guys soon. And as always, the market is shifting. Make sure you work with a professional, whether that's myself or someone else. It's not good to go in with someone that you know, like, and trust. Go in with a person that is a professional that you know, like, and trust. Whether that's a referral or anything else, look at the videos on that. Have an amazing day. Talk to you guys soon.